Good morning, everybody, and welcome to ShortSalePowerHour.com. My name is Fred Weaver, and I'm here with my partner, Kevin Kaufman, who sometimes embarrasses me, but I think I do that to him as well. Um, we are with Group 4610, Arizona's premier short sale team, also known as guys that live and work in the Outback. Today, we have our segment called Effed Up Friday. Hopefully by now, some of you are getting used to the title. For those of you that are new, it stands for Forgetto, Forgettable I'm having trouble speaking today. It also stands for Unforgettable Friday. Depends on how you want to look at it. Today, for you those can also just think of it as effed up. Dude, that's on you, not on me. Today, for those of you who have been tuning in all week long with us, we've been talking about lead generation techniques and how we grew our business from 12 listings in February yeah, of 2008 absolutely. all the way to 95 plus listings that we have Over today. Um, we're going to focus in a little bit today on maybe a semi-controversial topic or maybe one that a lot of people don't want to talk about. Ooh, yeah, I know. Scary. Did you just say that? Um, there are some people out there, I got to tell you, that you actually don't want to work with. No, wait, it's okay. I know you got a real estate license. Don't so, get mad at him. And you so you think that anybody that just shows up at your door or calls your office and says they need to list their home, whether it be a short sale or whatever, that you're just supposed to work with. I have some news for you. You should be running a real estate business which means that you choose to work with them and they choose to work with you. Now, how in the world would I know something like that, Kevin? Maybe, I don't know, potentially we may have had an experience or two with a seller that perhaps oh. we should have chosen not to work with. We should have exercised our oh. right of choice and chosen not to work with this person. I'm gonna share one story. Oh, this one particular lady, let's, um, can we call her Mary Jane? Sure, Mary okay. Jane, that's kind so, of a, a plain Jane name. Exactly, plain Jane. So we have this woman by the name of Mary Jane, pretty, Pretty sweet lady for the most part, until we got to the point of process and how a short sale works with Group 4610. Anybody out there who's come to our class knows that we have a very defined system and process and you either follow it or I can't work with you. Well, Mary Jane wanted to have us change our process just for her, meaning one her big sticking point was she wanted us to do a BPO that we sent to the bank with our Wait, wait, this was because she had gone out and done a lot of internet research. All over YouTube. Oh, she yeah. Got she got this whole a, short sale. Yes. Mind you, Mary Jane is a teacher in another state. Not in Arizona, not a real estate agent, a teacher in another state. Yeah, but if she Googled it, she's an expert. Absolutely. So she went on Google and then went to YouTube and found all this short sale training and told her, hey, you have to do a BPO before you get an offer. You got to send the BPO to the bank. I said, well, hold on, Mary Jane. I know that that's what you heard, but I do things differently. And I'm the professional. I, uh, I'm part of Arizona's premier short sale team, not you. Now, I probably shouldn't have taken her listing, to be honest, though. We did end up closing the deal for Mary Jane. And at the end of the day, she was happy with the results. So was I, but man, she was a pain in the butt to work with. Um, I got another seller for you. This one shall remain nameless only because I don't remember their name. That's how memorable they were to me. Kevin probably does. But we took a listing in, uh, we'll call it the Ahwatukee, Phoenix area it's one time. Good. And uh, we marketed that listing for 30 or 45 days as per our system. We'll share more of that with you in coming weeks. And um, essentially, we got an offer on that listing. And what I felt was fair market value. Absolutely. A very good offer. Market. And so when we faxed over the offer and sent it to the seller and asked them to review it and call us and talk to us, um, wouldn't you know that all of a sudden they had decided, you know what, Kevin, Fred, I, I think we want to stay in our house a little bit longer, and so-and-so has been telling us that they can get a loan modification. Man, and that's effed up. Come on, guys. Here's totally the deal. forgettable. Here's the deal, guys. We have since fixed that process. The part of Effed Up Friday is to tell you how we fixed them. Well, we don't take Mary Janes anymore. But in addition to that, we now have what we call a loan modification waiver in our short sale package. What does that mean, Kevin? It's simply a waiver. It's, it's a statement from the seller in writing stating to us that they agree that they've exhausted all efforts for a loan modification and they are waiving their right to a loan modification. In addition to that, it's also a written statement to their lender saying, do not offer me a loan modification. I am not looking for a loan mod. I'm here to do a short sale. I understand that loan yep. modifications do not benefit me as a seller. Yep. Great technique, guys. If you're out there doing a lot of short sales and we hope you are and building a business, a business out of it, make sure you have some sort of loan modification waiver in your short sale package. Absolutely. It will exactly. ensure that you don't have to have any of those jack rod conversations with those sellers who all of a sudden change their mind. So anyway, um, we probably have a lot more stories yeah. we could share, but in the interest of continuing to receive referrals from most of our clients, we'll stop right there. Absolutely. We appreciate your time today. Thank you guys. And
As always, ready? One, two, three. Short sale power hour. Short sale power hour. Crush it!